Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Brian Chavis. Thanks for being on the show, Brian. Man, thanks for having me, Whitney. Uh, I'm excited to have you on the show. Just interacting a little bit before uh, we started recording. I, I, anyway, I, I really appreciate your time and, and know you're going to bring a lot of value to the listeners. Uh, yeah. But Brian is a Simon & Schuster best-selling author and, and one of only of a handful of authors with a real estate book in the U.S. Library of Congress. Well, that sounds impressive right there. <laughs> He's yeah. an award, award-winning coach and consultant a new recipient of the Bay Area Business Journal Top Entrepreneurs Awards, uh, founder of Chavis Capital, Brian Chavis Coaching and Consulting, and the Landlord Academy. Above all, Brian is a brain tumor survivor. And he says, not, not a survivor, but a thriver. You're a thriver, and, amen. amen. That's right. Brian, th- thank you so much for your time. I'm looking forward to this. Give the listeners a little more about who you are, what you're up to, uh, you know, in this syndication game, and, and, uh, and let's dive in. Yeah, a little bit about who I am. I think you touched all the all the uh, the key topics. I mean, I would only you know add that I'm just you know I'm an average guy, uh, average high school student, barely graduated. So you know when people mention these accolades, I like to always you know let people know it started from humble beginnings and a lot of hard work. So you know getting into the U.S. Library of Congress and having these businesses and successful you know brands. Uh, you know, it's it's possible for anybody to do. I mean, obviously, my school teachers back home will probably definitely second that. So, uh, but yeah, you know, just just an average joke, just an average joke, man. So, you know, what is your focus in the industry right now? Or, you know, what type of buildings are you buying? Or are you focusing more on coaching? What, what are you working oh, on mostly right now? Yeah, I mean, I love the coaching. Uh, I focus on it because I feel like education and training is a calling of mine. Uh, however, with Ch- there's two parts of who I am. There's Chavis Capital, and then there's you know Brian Chavis Coaching and Consulting. The Brian Chavis Cat or the Brian Chavis Coaching and Consulting of always is you know out there um, providing education and training and consulting to uh, you know housing authorities and other uh, REITs and uh, private equity firms and just your av- you know your average investor. Um, you know, so always looking to, to bring the, the best in education um, and make that available to everyone. And then Chavis Capital, uh, you know, my focus there uh, is, is, is definitely uh, multifamily. That's, you know, that's what I know. It's, it's kind of it's what I do. It's all I've ever done. Um, so, yeah, you know, definitely uh, aggressive. You know, our, our, our latest acquisition in downtown St. Pete last year, focusing on that and just focusing on getting, uh, finding more opportunities out in the marketplace. So, uh, you know, putting deals under contract is, is, is uh you know, a race to 5,000 doors is, uh, is the goal right now. Nice. Nice. I love that goal of 5,000. Uh, yes. That's awesome. And so let, let's dive into that deal a little bit, you know, uh, the deal in St. Pete. Could you elaborate? Tell us a little about that. Yeah, it's a deal I'm really excited about. Uh, uh, partner Mark Willis, you know, from um, the former CEO of Keller Williams, who retired. You know, we went in and, and knocked that project down. But it was, a, it was a project that, you know, I think a lot of people, it, it was off market. And I was able to get it through, uh, you know, through techniques that I use, you know, whether that be direct mail pieces and, of course, or just getting out there and, 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 and building yourself a brand on uh, social media. Someone reached out to me about this project and, um, you know, I felt like it still was undervalued. Most people thought it was priced right. You know, everything down there is trading right at the high, high fours and uh, mid five caps. Um, and, mo- you know, I think most now are trending towards the high, high fours right now um and uh most people thought i you know i i you know i you know, paid cash for it and you know probably thought I, I probably paid market uh but i felt there was a lot of meat on the bone and i think a lot of people make a lot of mistakes because they look at buildings and they look at pricing but they really don't understand prospect tenants demographics and psychographics um and because i study not necessarily buildings but i study uh, my prospect tenant's demographics. It's really, you know, the demographics and, you know, demographics tell you who the tenant is. Psychographics tell you their why. And so when I understand the who and the why, I'm able to kind of really um, uh, create a, uh, a rent schedule. People call it performance, but I'm able to build a pro form. I'm able to build and have an idea of who a prospect tenant is, 
and then I can see, you know, what type of improvements I can do to the building and how far I can take those improvements. Every improvement I do has a dollar amount associated with it. So I knew exactly where I felt like I could push these rents, uh, understanding who my prospect tenants demographics were. I felt like I really knew where I could take these rents and that they were really undervalued. And, uh, and so I got into that market. I was one of the, I think I, I was the only one to really push the rents past the $900 mark there. And then uh, now we're well above the $900 mark. We're in the 975, 985 with some select units and a little over a thousand with the amenities like the parking. So some units I'm getting $1,100 for. So, you know, I like to say either I was crazy or I was crazy like a fox. I let others kind of figure that out. But, you know, I think for me, I take the guesswork out of it um you know by understanding that you know i'm not buying buildings buildings have never paid me rent people pay me rent so at the end of the day my main focus is always on that prospect tenants their demographics and their psychographics so really understanding that then i can kind of find a product in the marketplace that fits those needs and then uh and then obviously through the uh you know the, the management of the, the property from the operational standpoint being able to put in the right type of systems um you know that that you know, it all comes together now, I, I like how you elaborate or you talk about uh, uh, understanding the who and the why. And uh, earlier, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, like we don't buy buildings, we buy the demographics and, you know, we're focused on the prospect tenants. And so, uh, you know, can we dig into that a little bit, like helping you know, help, help us to uh, know how to understand the who and the why and, and why that's important. But let's dig in. Yeah. So there, in my book, I forgot what chapter it is. Um, but I talk about a process called the CODA process, which is strategic evaluation of a target area. So it begins with the process of going, really going through that, that process and understanding that process is the study of building permit activity, average household size, average income, um, you know, uh, the demographics and psychographics, uh, mortgage interest rates. So I'm taking and compiling this information and what I'm really trying to do is really drill down to who my prospect tenant is. It's no different than when you go to, you know, to Walmart nowadays or CVS or uh, Walgreens and, you know, receipts used to be this big, Whitney, and now receipts are like, you know, the, long, the size of your arm or the length of your arm. And the reason is, is because they're basically, every time you go in and you're buying something, they understand what you're buying. That's why they ask you for your phone number. So they're associating what you're buying with your number, creating a profile on who you are, and then they're able to offer these coupons based on the store you know, on, on your needs, on their prospect tenants' needs. So they're taking the guesswork on out of, uh, you know, how do we get this person back in the store? It's, uh, you know, no, there's no, they're no longer guessing. They're getting down to really understanding what your needs are. And so they're offering you, you know, so if you're going in there buying a lot of toothpaste, you'll look at your receipt and you'll notice that there's a ton of ads, you know, that are giving you coupons based on toothpaste and the type of toothpaste you buy. Um, you know, and then you can go into one Walmart on one side of the zip code go to another Walmart on another side of town and you'll notice that the items on the shelves differ. And it's because they're catering to that particular demographic. And you, and you also notice I'm from Florida, so we're big on Publix, but the, a lot of the grocery, the, 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 the rest or the um, grocery store chain moved their bakery from the back to the front. The reason why they did that is all based on demographics and understanding that when these, when these individuals are coming into these stores are coming in hungry. So it's, they're, they're, it's, they're, they're going to sell and move more, of their products and services by placing the bakery up front. Cause now you got to walk past the bakery, smell the bread, smell the rotisserie cooking. It's kind of hard to, to bypass all that and go get the, the box of Xana Ranch or whatever you were going to go to make quick meal at home. And you end up buying that with rotisserie. Well, you multiply that by hundreds of thousands of people that come in the store on an hourly basis are, you know, between a, uh, a full, full day and you've upgrowth up, up, upsold someone on rotisserie three or four dollars i mean that means a lot so you know demographics and psychographics have always been around it's just that our industry leaders like walmart walgreens these individuals you know they've they've, they've made a science of it and i think a lot of investors uh they lose sight and there's a difference between chess and checkers it's the same board but these are two totally different games and i think a lot of individuals approach real estate investing uh like it's checkers and I think for the most part, you know, uh, you have to approach it like chess. You have to understand that buildings don't pay rent, people pay rent. So at the end of the day, you know, most books, most gurus, most people they just really focus on markets and, and buildings and, you know, this is the type of building. They really just talk, about, I don't want to talk about the building. I want to talk about my prospect tenant. Because at the end of the day, that's the individuals who's paying rent. 
Those are the individuals that I'm seeking after to make sure that they're renewing. And none of this is going to happen unless I've already anticipated their needs in advance. So that's kind of the uh, 60 second. No, I love that. The anticipating their needs in advance. And, you know, where, where am I going to, uh, what's going to be my best resource for finding some of this information that we need to know? Well, I'll, say, I'll tell you this. In the beginning, it was, it was uh, you had to pay big dollars for this research. You know, in the multifamily industry, we used to pay a company back in the day called Triad Research and Development. We used to pay tons of money. Uh, for this. But nowadays, I mean, with Google searches and just going in, if you just go in and you were to Google right now, your zip code, you'll see a, uh, um, a link come up called City Data. And City Data has a ton of recent information um, that's free. And that you know, individuals can begin to kind of really just, you know, peel back the layers of the onion and understanding what the, uh, what the demographics are in their particular area that they're looking to invest in. And then, of course, you go to your city websites like you know, if you're in the city of St. Pete or Tampa, you're going to go to those 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 sites. Um, and if you're able to spend a little bit of money, your their services like Reonomy and you know all kind of other services that are out there that are available to uh, to guys that are um are are, are 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 investors that are able to help you kind of really drill down and help with uh, demographics and psychographics and uh, and pull up uh, all types of information out there. But for free right now for your listeners, without spending money, I would just say. You Google search zip codes and you'll get a lot of that. Awesome. And so I want to change gears a little bit. I know uh, before we started recording, uh, you were talking about the coaching and talking about, uh, you know, how uh, different industries you have to have, the, you know, a certification and, and, you know, how, you know, as far as for a syndicator, I'd never heard of a, like a, a, a certification course for, sin, for a syndicator. Uh, you know, right. and, yeah. and so I wanted you to elaborate on that a little bit and like, why is that beneficial and, you know, and, and what, what does that do for us? Uh, I think uh, there's a ton of things. So when I first, you know, of course, got back into the space, you know, after 2012 being sick for five years, I kind of come back into the space. And now it's just like everyone's talking apartments. Uh, you know, I, you can go back well before, you know, I was, you know, of course, with my books, 2009, I was signed with Simon & Schuster. I've been talking about this for a long time. I've been doing this for a very long time before it became really popular, boot camps and you know, it seems like there's a boot camp every week or an investor summit every week about multifamily. It wasn't like that when I first got out. Um, when I stepped back in, I noticed that, you know, and this is great for our industry. We love growth. However, the problem with growth is, is if we don't hit the pause button, we're going to say, hey, we're creating all these syndicators, but are we really creating educated syndicators? We're talking about raising people, you know, raising money, other people's money, other people's livelihoods. What credentials do you have? What experience do you have? And I know and understand that not everybody's going to come from the industry like me and have this experience. So how do I create a, a program or a certification that's going to give these individuals the experience that they need and the confidence that they need that, you know, at the end of the day, if all hell breaks loose, I know I can run the property. I have tons of YouTube videos of me actually having to let the entire staff go and run a 130-unit apartment building for a hedge fund by myself, figured out the staff was stealing. They were incompetent. So, you know, my father taught me long ago, I can do bad all by myself. I let the staff go and, uh, and ran the 133 units for a couple of days until I staffed it by myself. But the idea is that if, as a syndicator, if you can't do that and you don't have that confidence, really should you be raising people's money? So um, are raising money from individuals outside of friends and family. Really, you know, friends and family is probably the worst because they know where you live. So, you know, should you be raising money, period, is the question. And so I just felt like there was a need to really give people training and education. Um, you know, and I felt like I wanted to do it at a price point that made sense where they didn't have to go to school and learn how to become an underwriter and learn to take all these finance courses and spend money, tons of money and, 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 and years that they probably don't have. I just wanted to create a certification where individuals could put on their resume. Lenders could look at it and say, okay, well, I see you've got some kind of training and education and, you know, and, 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 and notice that these individuals have, uh, have been certified and, and keep up with their education and their, and their training on a, on a continuous basis. So I uh, seen a need and I decided to, uh, to fill the need. And really for myself as well. This always starts with myself and what I'm going to do for my team. And then, of course, you know, it, it just takes off to uh, – you know, how can we offer that certification to others? That's awesome. And uh, unfortunately, we're, you know, we're running low on time, but, you know, a few more questions. Uh, what's been the hardest part of the syndication journey for you? You know, the, the, 
the heart man i mean after conquering a brain tumor brother i i really it's it's kind of tough to to say that anything business wise or business related is, is tough for me so i just think with you know with discipline and the right amount of the right approach to anything um you know just you know i'm cautious to say you know um that the industry has been tough it's been an industry that is uh that has lent itself to uh give me a lifestyle and uh you know really i have i i you know, I, I really can't say. I I hope I, I hope I'm not dodging a question. I you know, but I, I just really feel like I'm grateful. You know, Whitney. I'm you know, just I, I have I have you know, even if I have a bad day, I'm not raising money. We're not finding deals. I mean, is it worse than my worst day? Is it worse than you know that day when I was diagnosed with a brain tumor? Is it worse than dealing with chemo? Is it worse than having seizures? No. So at the end of the day, man, I really you know, I, I, at the end. I, I I appreciate that outlook. I really do. I, I really your, your worst day is not near as bad as somebody else's worst day. <laughs> There's Amen. only somebody that's got it worse. And and so, what is your your best advice for taking care of investors? Wow, it's really just mastering your craft. Um, you know, taking care of their money is 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 is, is the number one principle. Educating yourself and training yourself. Uh, you know, and, and just always, you know. At the end of the day, I think that's I think that's the number one thing. That's that's the principal thing is making sure that we as syndicators are um, are well versed and that we're you know iron sharp as iron. That we're all helping each other out and we're all seeking out the best training and education possible that's available to us. And, and just making sure that you're just keeping sharp in the industry. Nice and and Brian, you know how how do you like to give back? Oh wow, um, I guess right now is uh, really just, just making sure that I share that story. I just did a, an event with New View and we just signed a deal with, uh, um, God, it just slipped my head because the deal's, the deal's brand new, but I'll make sure I get it posted. But uh, our syndication platform that we have uh, that takes care of the, uh, the process, I just did an interview with them, but making sure that I always let everyone, everyone know uh, my story and where I came from and how you know, I had to start over in 2012 and being diagnosed with this brain tumor and having to uh, lose everything and come back um, after not having insurance. You know, I think really just making sure that I share my testimony is, is my way of giving back. And then, uh, you know, and if, and if I can, you know, continue to lend to, to, to my, my, my platform, to organizations like yours, what you're doing, the outreach that you have uh, with uh, adopting children, if I can just figure out a way to, to, to be of service to others, then, um, you know, really that's, that, that's what it's all about to me, for me. Wow. Oh, that's awesome, Brian. You've been a great guest. And I really appreciate you sharing from your experience and expertise from being in the industry so many years. And, you know, tell the listeners how they can learn more about you and, and the coaching and the certification and, you know, and get in touch with you. Yeah, um, brianchavis.com. If you're interested in, uh, in perhaps investing with me in some multifamily projects, it's uh, chaviscapitalre.com. Uh, my YouTube channel is Brian, uh, Chavis.com forward slash YouTube. And, uh, yeah, that's, you know, I'm shooting training and education videos every day, um, announcing our new syndication platform partnership that we have. So syndicators that are able to really handle the back end. Uh, you know, this platform is, is awesome. We're excited about that. And so, um, we're going to be doing a multifamily meetup every month. Whitney, I'd love for you to come to St. Pete. I'll, again, I'll put you up. Uh, come to our one of our meetups, man. I'd love to meet you there and 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 have you out there. But we're doing a multi-family meetup every month in, in, in downtown St. Pete. Uh, so these are areas where you can find me. Great, well, Brian. Th thank you again for your time and being on the show. I've really enjoyed getting to know you a little bit and, and hearing more about your story. An amazing journey you've had, and uh, congratulations to you on this success that you've had and and coming back from from losing it all. And, uh, but, you know, thank you so much and appreciate the listeners being with us today and every day. I hope you'll be back tomorrow and hope you're sharing and enjoying the show. Hope you go to LifeBridge Capital, connect with me. I'll help you any way I can. We'll schedule a call and uh, join the Facebook group, the Real Estate Syndication Show, so we can all learn from experts like Brian and uh, grow our businesses together. We'll talk to each of you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.